Hello everybody, this is another Unicast. Today I'm going to talk about Wiki.js, which is a quite new piece of open source software. Wiki.js is, like the name suggests, a wiki software. If you don't know what wiki softwares do, they give you the possibility to store content into a structured format and make it available through your web browser, like Wikipedia does. But Wiki.js can be self-hosted. It's comparable to MediaWiki, for example, which might be the most popular or the most famous wiki software out there. Wiki.js is written in JavaScript and uses Node.js in the background in order to run it on a server. Uh, as Node.js is quite platform, platform independent, it can be run on like anything from Microsoft Windows over Linux to FreeBSD and also macOS. This is the Wiki.js homepage and it gives you very good information about how expandable it is and how it can be used. One key feature of Wiki.js is that it can be very easily deployed and also updated. It is very fast, responsive and it has a quite modern user interface. It can be extended with some modules, for example, for analytics like Google Search, Google Analytics. There are plenty of different authentication providers you can make use of in order for your users to get uh, connected if you don't want to manage your users locally within Wiki.js. For corporate networks, there is also an LDAP backend. The databases supported are also very broad, as you can see. Those are the available editors and the Markdown editor together with a visual editor are the most powerful ones. You can also embed raw HTML content and you can also switch from the editors, meaning you create a new page, you write it in Markdown, another user comes along and wants to edit the page, is not so very fond of Markdown, but wants to use the visual editor, then you can just convert the whole page into visual editor and go ahead and save it once again. Those logging facilities over here are not yet available to you as the current version 2.5 does not support them yet, but version three of Wiki.js is in the make and I think it will be available this uh, spring, probably. Those are the available search engines. Uh, I prefer to use PostgreSQL as a database backend so you can use the integrated database search, which is not available for MariaDB or MySQL. Some of those marked with this little bold over here are also not available yet in version 2.5. And there is another possibility for you to store your data or sync it for backup purposes, as you probably would want to use a database but within the database the content is always stored in in markdown so this content can be synchronized to those kind of storages like for example s3 or google drive sftp or git is also a very famous uh, version to store those backups all right then i would say let's dive in i set up a demo site and this demo site is quite blank, all right? There is not much information here yet, but this is what people see who visit the site that I set up without being authenticated. In order to be able to create pages or edit existing content, I have to authenticate myself, which I'm going to do right now. I'm not using any external authentication provider, I'm just using local users, which are stored in the database itself. All right, now the interface changed a little bit. It went from light to dark mode, which is why in my personal profile, I chose to use the dark appearance. Those are the locales. I don't know how to ex uh, pronounce this word correctly, but I can set the default language and the time zone for myself and some additional things. I can change my password, of course, and I can see what activity there was on my personal account. And here we can see what pages 
I created and when they were last updated. But this is not the important aspect. I would like to show you how Wiki.js works. And for that, I would say we create a new page. This is the new page dialog and it asks me to give the page a name and I just call it example. And right now I need to choose which editor I would like to use. And for the easiness of my, <laughs> of my unicast, I would like to show you the, what you see is what you get editor, which is a little bit easier to grasp. So the name of my page is example and I give it a short description. <laughs> and now comes um, an important part because the structured data I talked about earlier needs to be put in like folders, but you do not create folders explicitly like you do it in an explorer on Windows or something like that, but it's uh, an implicit task. Meaning when I create the new page, it needs a path and the path needs to be set uh, like this. Let's say we call it folder one and within that folder, there is my example example page and I can also define tags in order to be able to find this page like uh, a good tag might be example and let's say road works I don't know it's not important what I write here but it's just for the sake of demonstration and now I say okay and I get into the editor I can start writing right now like if I was in a word processing application. Header and I mark it and say it's heading type one. And now there's my paragraph and I write some text and I can also make use of the standard formatting options like bullet points or numbered lists. All right, very easy. And I can also put in some tables, say it's a small one, and this is heading one, heading two and so forth. And I would like to make it, wait a second, this row is the header row. And here we have some text we can format very easily. Cell properties, I would like to have a dashed border around here. And I would like to have a background color of orange. You can see what I mean. But you cannot only put text and tables into such a document, but you can also place, wait a second. <laughs> you can also place like images into it. And here comes another quite important aspect. Not only the pages themselves reside within folders, but it's also the case for your images. So, as you would not want to put all images into the root directory, as I did here, which is stupid, you should create folders that relate to those pages, yeah? So, my folder where the example page is in is called folder one. And so, I will call this folder I would like to put images into. And now we can start by browsing my local files. So, here we have a picture of a Smurf. I would like to upload to the page and now it's being placed into this very folder I just created and I would like it it's and I would like to insert it into my wiki page. All right, let's say that's it for now. And we create the page. Now we come back to the viewing perspective. And we are already inside this folder one. We can go back to the home of the site and see that there is a new folder called folder one with a document inside called example. So you don't have to create folders in advance of creating a page, but you can do it while creating a page. And that's the only way to do it. When you delete a page and let's say we delete the only page inside a folder, the folder vanishes too. So you don't have to delete folders explicitly, but it's also an implicit action.
All right, now I would like to show you how the structure works when you would like to link to a page. And for that purpose, I need to copy some part of my path I would like to link to. And let's say we go to the home page, edit this home page. And let's say we would like to make a link to this example page in folder one and we can make it a link and of course I could link to some website with a full URL but right now I just want to link to my example page let's save it close and get back to the viewing perspective and let's try to hit that link. All right, that's it. And I would like to show you some more actions. You can, for example, not only edit a site, but you can, you can convert it to a different editor. Like we created this page in Visual Editor and now we would like to have it in Markdown. So this is Markdown. And it's very convenient to write in Markdown because you can just type and don't switch between keyboard and mouse. But you see, ah, I think you get the idea. As Wiki.js is actually a quite young software, there are actually some inconsistencies. For example, there is a very nice and remarkable diagram function, which can only be used when you are in markdown mode. Let me show you. I would like to enter. A, uh, I would like to insert a diagram into this page, and now I can just draw diagrams this way. You get the idea, and then save it, and then it will be inserted into the page and I can just edit the diagram every time I would like to for example correct this yeah, this is not as I want it to be this is nice but it shouldn't be with an arrow like that right we give it some nice color and save it once again there is also an export function. You can export those diagrams in SVG or PNG or I think JPEG. And let's save it. Another shortcoming is the fact that when you, for example, convert from a page that makes use of those markdown only features to a page that is in the visual editor, look what happens. The diagram is just gone. And when I, it seems to be gone, but when I close it, it's still there, but I cannot edit it. And when I convert back to the markdown editor, it's completely gone. No, it's not completely gone, but I'm not able to edit it anymore. So there are some inconsistencies, but I really hope that in version three, they will be taken care of. There is also a search function, which works quite well. You can also duplicate pages like that. For example, this example, oh no, I'm on the home page. This home page is being duplicated into folder one as old home page, let's say. Select and there we go, old home page. And now we have duplicated the home page from the starting from the landing page into folder one to old home page. You can also rename the page or move it into a different folder. Let's say we want to put it into folder two. Boom, there it is can see we have now two folders. You can of course also delete a page 
And as it was the only page inside folder 2, folder 2 is also gone now. This is a very basic overview of what you can do with Wiki.js from a user perspective. And I would like to dig a little bit into what the software looks like if you are the administrator. The administration dashboard shows a general overview of what pages there are and some statistics. You can set the locale, for example, what your main language is, install some other languages to the site so you can easily make your wiki multi-language support by creating new articles in your main language and then create a correlating document in another language, just like how it works on Wikipedia. In the navigation menu, you can switch between some navigation modes. You can choose between side tree, which creates a very static tree from what your folder structures look like, or you can create your own static, na static navigation, meaning you have to create menu entries and link them to specific pages. In the pages menu, you get a complete overview of all the pages there are. And from here, you can also edit them and make changes to them. In tags, you can see all the tags that has been used within your wiki. And in theme, you can currently only switch between dark and non-dark mode. Now comes the important part for the administrators because groups and users is very essential to your wiki because you can define and also you need to define how your wiki works. For example, you could make the complete wiki non-readable to everyone who is not authenticated, but you can uh, also have a mixture which might be the most common way to do it. So you have some pages that are publicly available, others aren't, but they are only available or readable to users that are authenticated and even another group of pages are only for example <laughs> editable for the administrators of your company for example it's completely customizable so you need to learn how to do it and after that you can create your own environment all right that's it for starters i hope you enjoyed my video and if some questions are still open please put them in the comment section down below. And I would be really happy if you liked my video. So take care of yourself in these troublesome times and I hope to see you again. Bye bye.